Hello, and welcome to the Thyroid Warrior Podcast. I'm Ebony, and I'm here as your wellness facilitator. I'm going to be sharing my experiences in managing Hashimoto's disease. I really hope that it'll help you on your personal journey. Keep in mind, however, this does not substitute for medical advice. It is only for your information and motivational purposes only. Now, let's get started. You guys, we did it! I really wish I had some type of horn or bell or something. Even though we're not at the end of 2019, I want you to celebrate. You have done amazing. You've done so many things. You've accomplished a lot and you've been able to find out a lot. Many of you have found out what your official diagnosis is and you're making strides to understand that and become the best version of you. And that is what I have been trying to drive home for the last couple of episodes. So just like in the last episode, I asked you to break down 2019 and look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. What were some of your lessons learned from that? For me, I realized that I really and truly need to learn how to not be so independent and that there are people in my life that love me and care about me and that want to be there for me. I just have to allow them to do that. This year, I had to open up and allow other people in because I realized that I had to, in order to move forward, I had to stop being so independent and so focused on, "Eh, it's okay, I'll get through it, I'll just push through, everything is going to be fine. Yes, everything is going to be fine, but we weren't really meant to be in this world alone And I had to learn how to accept help from other people. And it didn't even have to do with like monetary help. It was just knowing that people were there for me made a huge difference. And I really and truly can't even begin to describe to you how easier things became when I stopped getting in my own way and allow other people to be there for me. I also had a goal for myself this year, and I said that I wanted to be in the best shape of my life. And I hit that. It was hard. Let me begin by saying that. However, I don't think I've ever done anything like that before in terms of setting a goal like that. And it was it was a big goal, and it was lofty especially in the midst of just going through so much emotionally. But I've never stuck to a goal the way I stuck to this one before. And I'm currently looking at my running bid for World Cancer Day. This year, I ran my very first 5K. And that was to support my dad, who is now cancer-free from two types of cancer. And I'm just I'm thrilled because of the diagnosis. I'm thrilled because I did something that I said I would never be able to do. And I'm just looking forward to seeing what 2020 is going to hold in terms of my health goals that I have for myself. So I want you to set some goals. Set some goals that are kind of scary to you. But that path to accomplishing those goals is going to be hard. It's going to be frustrating. But at the end of it, it's so rewarding. And you're going to feel so good when you accomplish it. So I always have professional business and personal goals, which are always health related. But in 2020, my business goal, my goal for you all is to serve you. I pledge to serve the crap out of you in 2020. And so many things are happening behind the scenes. They're in the works. And I'm so ready to help you be the very best version of yourself. And I cannot wait. 
but I'm going to continue to look at the goals that I've set and reevaluate them constantly. My accountability partner and I are already focused on what we're going to do for 2020. And I just want you to take some time and write out a few. Start off with maybe three. Make them small, kind of scary, but attainable. Make sure that you're making them measurable and that you're smart with them. Don't just say, I want to lose weight. Make a a goal in terms of I'm going to lose 20 pounds by March of 2020. That way you can work backwards and it's a lot easier for you to be able to track that. Over the last year and a half, I've officially lost 20 pounds and many people are like, oh my gosh, like, Where'd you lose that? You're not that big. I'm like, but I'm tall. And for me, that extra weight was wreaking havoc on my joints. So I've learned what a healthy and sustainable weight range is for me. And I plan on maintaining that in the new year. And one other goal that I've had for a very long time that just came to pass was becoming a personal trainer. That goal has been 10 years in the making, but I got sick and I didn't think that I would be able to train other people on how to be healthy and how to get strong when I couldn't even do half the things that I thought I should do. I couldn't stand up straight I couldn't stand for long periods of time. I couldn't remember anything. I could barely lift a weight. I could barely lift my head in many cases. And to be able to have gone 10 years to come back to that goal means the world to me. It's so hard when working with a personal trainer that's not used to working with someone that has joint pain or if when I said I can't really do squats with full range of motion, I was often met with a confused look. And fortunately, I found someone in Tiffany and she was amazing. And just watching her train me and the patience that she had with me was amazing. And it pushed me a little bit further to want to do that and to believe in myself and to believe that I could I finished my exam in 30 minutes. You get two hours. I took eight more minutes because I was like, wait a minute. I shouldn't have finished that this fast. But then I say, you know what? I'm just going to leave it to where it is. And if I pass, I pass. If I don't, I'll try again. And one of the things that the woman at the testing center told me that I thought was amazing and timely, she said her son told her something one day, and I'm not quite sure where the quotation comes from, but she said, sometimes your biggest fear is your biggest opportunity. So I challenge you that whatever you're currently afraid of, whatever thing that you're thinking about doing, do it. Stop walking in fear because you weren't made to do that. So why continue? And I've been challenging you a lot lately, and I'm going to keep challenging you because I know that you can do it and I believe in you and I'm proud of you for everything that you've done this year. But I want to see more from you. I know that you can do it and I know that you're capable of it. I'm looking forward to seeing all of the amazing posts and work from you in 2020 by tagging at Joyful Ebony on all social media platforms because I want to see you thrive. So with that, let's take 2020 by storm and be happy, be whole, and be well. Take care. Okay, thyroid warriors, get out there and take things one step at a time. Remember... Be great, reflect on your triumphs, and as always, be well. Take care.